Welcome to Destination 101, the podcast of Toastmasters District 101. Take a ride with us on Highway 101 and discover Toastmasters clubs from Silicon to Surf, clustering along Highway 101 in California. Yeah, how many times can I say 101, right? Well, find out about District 101 news, tips and events, and hear from members and clubs. I'm your host, Birgit Starmans. Welcome to our listeners, and we're happy that you can join us. Today, we have the most number of guests ever on the podcast, and we'll be talking about bilingual clubs. First, I'd like to welcome our guests, and for the clubs in alphabetical order by club name, we have Brian Duguay from Japanese English Toastmasters and Ashok Handigal from Wak Patugalu Club, and I'll have you correct me in a second. You got it right, uh, we're good. Awesome. <laughs> and then we're also joined by Yifang Yu, our club growth director and program quality director elect. So thank you, all of you. Thank yeah, you. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. All right. Let's have a quick round of introductions because I always feel like reading a bio is a little bit boring for a podcast. So let's do it in the same order. Brian, could you introduce yourself and what role do you have in the club? Sure. Very good. So I'm currently the president of Silicon Valley Japanese English Toastmasters. Uh, I was previously the VPE. I've been with the club about two and a half years now, and uh, I've really enjoyed the time that I've spent with this club. It's been a great learning experience. That's great. Yeah. Welcome. All right, Ashok, you're next. Hi, um, I am a president uh, of uh, Walk Portugal Toastmasters Club. Um, I have held uh, various uh, officer roles in this club. And uh, I have been associated with the club right from its inception. And I have loved every minute of it, I should say, and continue to do so. And, and Walk Portugal has really enriched my life. That's fabulous. And welcome to a repeat guest, Yi Fang. Could you introduce yourself a little bit? Hi, Birgit. My initial goal in joining Toastmasters is to practice my English. You can totally tell my English is my second language. Obviously, five-year Toastmasters practice did improve my English significantly. Here I am today doing a podcast with you in English, talking to four Toastmasters. I think in total, we speak at least six languages. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty impressive. So let's get a little history of the clubs. And Ashok, I guess you're there from the beginning. And hopefully, Brian, I'm sure you know a little bit about the history. So how long ago did your club charter? And what gave you the idea of that chartering in the first place? Because I think bilingual clubs have not really been a thing for very long. Um, that's right, Birgit. So um, Wak Putukulu was uh, founded 13 years ago in year 2008, April, uh, as part of District 4. And I believe it was the first non-English speaking club in the district, if I'm not mistaken. And the speciality about this club is it is not, it's not even bilingual, it is single language club, which is Kannada. So Kannada is one of the Indian languages from South India. And um, we, we, you know, we, there's, there is a large population of uh, Kannada speaking people in the Bay Area. And we, we have a lot of community events, a lot of uh, programs, functions, um, and cultural events that we were part of. And at that time, we thought, you know, yes, why not we model something on the lines of Toastmasters uh, Club? where we can continue to improve our leadership skills and also learn the language skills and try to retain our roots and continue to grow it. I think that's a really good point. If you don't use a language, you actually end up losing it. That's true. That's true. We do use, you know, most of us use the language at home. We wanted to have a platform where we, we can freely uh, learn how to express ourselves in, in, in a continuous way, not in a conversation fashion, but something beyond that as a prepared speech or a you know, table topic speech. I think that's a great idea. I know I'm originally from Germany, but at home, we didn't exactly use business terms in our conversations. So I can definitely see the value of that. 
Brian, let's go to you. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of the Japanese English Toastmasters? Sure, very good. Our club actually chartered in 1990. So it's been wow. around for quite a while. Wow. I, I don't know if it chartered in District 4 in the, or in District 101. We're in District 101 now. I know that District 101 broke off from 4 when, uh, when 4 started to get so big. We are a sister club to San Francisco Japanese English Toastmasters that started in 1988. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, they're the first bilingual club. I hear a competition here between you two. (laughs) Actually, uh, yes, that was District 4 because District 101 was born in 2016. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely in 4. Yeah. So San Francisco Jets was the first one to charter. And there was a lot of interest from people in San Jose Japanese English community, and there was a desire to start the club there as well. It has been around for a long time, and I don't know the roots, to be honest. That's what I know so far. That's actually really fascinating. That's a really long time. Do you still do anything together with your sister club, or have you parted ways? No, no, absolutely. We have open houses together. We have invite each other to barbecues and open houses and gatherings of, of that kind. They've been online most like most lately, but we do still continue to communicate with them and, and get together. I think that's great. Now, my next question is, how are your meetings structured? Are they half English, half in the other language? Is it all one all or the other? How do you structure that? And let me just kick it back to both of you. Ashok, do you want to start? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. Just, just to uh, clarify what I said earlier. Um, so ours was probably the first non-English club where, you know, exclusively it is done in non-English. So yours is a bilingual, lang- lang- the bilingual club. I understand that. But we also are proud to say that ours was the first Toastmasters in any Indian language in the world. <laughs> Ashok, continue. I have a question here. Yeah, sure. You said your language is Katana. Kannada, K-A-N-N-A-D-A, Kannada. Kannada, uh, your language is Canada. Kannada, it has got nothing to do with Canada. Canada. <laughs> the, the country of Canada. Canada. <laughs> Why is your club named Wankapatu Gulu? Yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent question. I should have mentioned about it. Wak Putugulu, um, it's a Kannada word. What it means is wak is the speech speaking Uh, patu uh, is expert galu is the plural so talking expert uh, experts or speaking experts uh, that's the that's the name of the club walk particular that's pretty cool i like that yeah brian how about you how are your meetings conducted currently we are mixing the languages in one meeting so the meeting is actually primarily in english the reports and most of the meeting structure is in English. The place where we have the most Japanese language is in the prepared speeches and in table topics. There are, there are exceptions. It's a little bit fluid. Previously, we used to have two separate meetings, one in all English and one in all Japanese. And there were some difficulties with that. First of all, it took a lot of members to, to make all the roles, fill all the roles for both meetings. And it could be difficult. And I think there was a desire on some of the members to hear the other language. And those were the primary reasons, I think, to try and bring it together into one meeting. So I have to ask, because you're not, uh, your name is not obviously Japanese. How did you learn Japanese in the first place? <laughs> Yeah, good question. I I don't speak fluently. I was I was attracted to it because I my wife is Japanese and I've been learning Japanese. I thought it would be another great way for me to practice that and meet people uh, that have the same interests. That makes a lot of sense, and you've got more personal reasons for doing that as well. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, Birgit, to answer, uh, I didn't fully answer your last question. So we conduct everything in Canada. So right from the, uh, you know, opening with the uh, um, the sergeant at arms, and then the, there is the Toastmaster of the day, uh, introductions, introductions to the roles, introduction to the guests, 
uh, and the speeches, uh, table topics, um, evaluations and everything. So everything is done in Kannada. There may be uh, some usage of English words here and there, but not whole sentences. And we do make a note of uh, our grammarian makes a note of, you know, if anybody speaks English. How about your club communication? Do you write emails to each other with Katana? Uh, Canada. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's a very good question, if I. Um, yeah. Last few years, you know, we are totally oriented towards Facebook and WhatsApp groups. Mm -hmm. And there we, you know, we, we use a lot of Canada. A lot of Canada can be written, you know, using our mobile phones or on the laptop. So that's a, that was actually a really good question, Yifang. So mm. Brian, do you write to each other in Japanese as well? Or not no, not not usually. No, well, it's, it's a whole different kind of quote unquote alphabet if you think about it. So that makes sense. So I think I already know this answer from Ashok, but for Japanese English Toastmasters, do you have some kind of minimum knowledge requirement of Japanese or are you happy to take anyone who's just dipping their toe into the water, so to speak. We're happy to take anyone who's interested. Usually, if they don't have much interest, that won't be interesting for them if they're not familiar with the language. So we found that all the ones, the, the people that are attracted are have always been someone that has interest in Japanese language from beginner to experienced uh, native speaker. Uh, that totally makes sense. And Ashok, I, I know the answer in, in your part, they need to be fluent in the language to participate, or at least somewhat. They, they should be, uh, you know, we expect that, you know, that they are familiar, um, they may not be using the language on day-to-day -day basis, but probably, you know, in, in earlier years or where they have grown up, or, you know, they may have um, family members, life partners uh, who speak that language. So some familiarity is, 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 I think, but, you know, once they come and start attending the sessions, I have seen people who have not spoken for many years pick up the language in no time. Within a few sessions, they, you know, they, they are one amongst us, you know, they are like experts. Oh, that's really great. So I heard some changes potentially of the traditional format. I've heard both Brian and Ashok you saying that you basically have the same roles of speaker and evaluator and table topics, et cetera. Have you changed any other kind of roles other than kind of giving somebody a quote unquote slap on the wrist if they speak English? Have you switched anything else around? Yeah, Birgit, if it's okay, I'll take this one first. Sure. In our club, we, we have two grammarians. We have one for English and we have one for Japanese because mm -hmm. we don't know when somebody may speak either language. Certainly from the prepared speeches, we know some days it's all English, some days it's all Japanese, sometimes it's a mix, but in table topics, we can get a mix. And so we want to have two grammarians. So that may be different than a traditional club. Let me drill into that a little bit. So if someone gets asked the table topics question and they can answer in either language. That's correct. That's actually pretty fascinating. So do they have the option for any of the other roles as well to be in either language or are you pretty much settled on what the Toastmaster speaks, for example? For the most part, the roles are carried out in English. The exception is the evaluators. Quite often, if a prepared speech is done in Japanese, for example, the evaluator will also do the evaluation in Japanese. So we tend to pair up evaluators with the speaker's language, if that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that concept a lot. That's actually super creative. So Ashok, do you want to weigh in on this question? Also, do you change anything yeah. else up? Yeah. So talking about the uh, any any change in the roles, um, no, we have the standard roles, um, and and uh, since everything is being done in Canada, um, the only thing the grammarian focuses on one of the things is any rarely used Canada words. So, so uh, the, he or she makes a note of them and, you know, includes them in the report, you know, saying, you know, these are the beautiful words I, I got to hear today and makes a list of, you know, 10, 15 words that, you know, different speakers have spoken. Uh, that's the focus. The focus is not much on, hey, you spoke one English word here, here, there. So it's a, it could be a generic comment, but individual words that are uh, specially spoken in Canada, which are, you know, rarely spoken, they are mentioned in the report. I like that. 
Yifang, do you see a trend with bilingual clubs being formed or is this an untapped opportunity? Of course, I see the potential, the huge potential of bilingual or non-English clubs in District 101. We are living in the Bay Area. Bay Area is a place with many diversified cultures. In my circle of connection, it's really hard for me to find a single person who speaks only English. We often hear people say that while trying to learn a new language or improve non-English language skills, they don't have a place to practice it with others. Toastmasters, Toastmasters is a place to practice with others. Why don't we build new clubs to help people who want to practice a language with others? be it Hindi, Vietnamese, Spanish, or anything. I can see a potential for trilingual clubs, if you think about it. <laughs> I can't agree with you more, Birgit. <laughs> that could be a lot of fun. So for Ashok and for Brian, where do you actually find members? Are there any community centers that you reach out to to find new members? Uh, yes, so um, we are Kanadigas part of various um, groups and associations. So there is, uh, you know, a big association of Kanadigas, uh, which mainly focuses on the uh, uh, Canada related or Canada culture related activities called Canada Kuta of Northern California. So it has got more than 1000 families as part of their members. So that's our home ground. But in addition, you know, we have similar associations that have come up in the East Bay um and um uh, even as far as san joaquin counties since the onset of the covid uh, we moved our physical meetings to uh, the zoom meetings and that has really opened up our reach and we have we have guests and members attending our virtual sessions all over from the USA. And not only that, we have people dialing in from India, Europe, and other parts of the world as well. So Zoom has really helped you in that regard. Yes, really, it has gotten the word out. And you know, many people are surprised, wow, such a thing exists. Um, and we should make use of it. So we have people reach out to us and just by word of mouth and with the social media and you know, Facebook is our very big platform, we get the word out, uh, we we do Facebook Live our sessions, uh, meaning you know people can without in a, in a non-interactive fashion, when the session is in uh, is going on, they can see it, or they are welcome to participate in the Zoom and wherein you know they can actively participate as well. So the Zoom recordings, uh, which are um, uh, the uh, the Facebook Live recordings, remain on Facebook for people to come back and watch. So. The, and those get repeated views and, you know, much later than this day of the session. So we got a lot of traction that way. Walk particularly is, is world famous, I should say. That's a great strategy. That's one to let other people know about. Brian, how about you? Where do you find new members? Yes, it's an interesting question because it, it has changed recently. Previously, we would have more a local interaction with the community with folks in Japantown, for example, at community centers there, uh, businesses and places where we can put up ads at the local grocery store, um, things of that nature. More recently, we've resorted to online presence, a lot through Meetup and, and through Facebook as well. And that has attracted members. We've also done it through a more organic method of word of mouth and participating in other clubs. So since we've been online, we can join clubs in Japan, for example. And we've done that. And there, there are clubs in Japan that are mostly English, where the Japanese people want to learn to speak more English. Wow. So we, we join those and we introduce ourselves and they're, they're fascinated that somebody from the US is joining their meeting and and they find out about our club and then they want to join our club and, and see how we do our meetings. And we've actually attracted members that way. So we have some members from Japan now. That's super that creative. Just go to the country of origin. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. So Yifang, what if someone wants to 
create a new bilingual club after hearing this? What resources do you have available to help them? Contact me. <laughs> Actually, today our guests are our biggest resource. Ren and Ashok are our biggest resource. Anyone who wants to create a bilingual club or non-English single language club, my first advice would be visit Brian's club, Jet, and Ashok's club, Wagpatugalu. I got it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Observe the bilingual club and a non-English single language club in life. District 101 has a club extension team that helps chart a new club from initial contact, demo meeting, and the charter paperwork. Contact me. I will connect you to all the resources we have. The team will work with you shoulder to shoulder along the journey. And Brian and Ashok, would you have any advice for anybody who would want to charter a bilingual club? And let's start with Brian now. Oh, that's a good question. It's interesting because we find in our club, for example, that there are a lot of Japanese native speakers that want to learn more English, especially since they're living here in the US. So there's a, there's a crossbreeding between folks that want to learn Japanese and folks that want to learn English. And those two cultures come together. And so I think it, in our group anyways, it feels like fostering a culture of learning each other's culture is, is a great way to bring people together. So the, the, the whole idea of the Toastmasters meeting is, is bringing people together to enjoy speech and language. And I think starting from that viewpoint of, of bringing these two cultures together is uh, a great place to start. That's actually a really nice twist on the whole concept of bilingual that others want to learn more English as well. And Ashok, how about you? Any advice that you would give to someone who wants to start a bilingual club? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, as Ifang said, you know, D101 has got a great team and I can also help you, you know, do the demo meetings or I can work with you. Uh, anyone who is interested, you know, not just one of the Indian, India has got many languages, you know, 20 plus official languages. So I'm happy to help in any of the Indian languages or any other language. In fact, I have seen some people, some members who started bringing in a lot of literary content into their speeches. They started reading big, big um, books, you know, novels and stories written in Canada and coming and talking about it. So they provided a, a platform for them to express their ideas, their learnings, and their their day-to-day -day life experiences in the language of their choice. So it's it's a great way to enrich your life, you know, retain the language, grow the language, develop the roots in your language and continue to do that. And and you will enjoy the journey. And and on the side, as the Toastmaster platform provides, you continue to develop your leadership skills. That doesn't go away. So it's only an additional thing, the language skill that you get. So with all the standard benefits of Toastmasters, you have added bonus of a language. Wow, excellent. I, I like that. Yeah. So from both of you, any final words on what's next or just keep going the way you are? Because it sounds like you both have a lot of success with your clubs. Yeah, if, if I can go, yes. Um, motivate other people to think on these lines. Yes, it is possible. You know, we were surprised when we started this club 13 years ago and, and later on for many years, we spoke to many people in India and they had never heard of. The growth of new clubs in India is, is very huge. The big, you know, the, the big number of clubs are coming up every week there, but not much in the area of, you know, hey, something can be done in our own language. So we have um, you know, spoken to many clubs, uh, Toastmasters in India, and uh, th there, are, there are some people who are genuinely interested in starting uh, such clubs. I believe one club was started, I don't know if they chartered, but they had started meeting in the Middle East. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it is Muscat or uh, Dubai, and uh, and here in the Bay Area, I believe uh, Telugu, um, one of the languages, Telugu, I think they are starting to meet or getting chartered. So 
it's it's um, it is starting it's bringing in the awareness yes something like this can be done um so that's that's a great thing and and uh, you're all welcome to visit our club and when we have a non native speaker or you know you don't understand kannada like our area <laughs> area directors <laughs> they, they all come and visit our club and we make sure that we are friendly to them and uh, as on need basis we do um mix up some english for their benefit uh, in fact they have participated in our table topics when we ask questions in english and so that's that that kind of uh, um culture is there in our club to welcome people who do not speak the language uh, in fact many um contestants who went on to the you know division or district level have given speeches you know for their practice in our clubs in english and we have given evaluation in english as well Nice. Uh, however on the other side you know here is someone you know uh, for example um, um um myself i have done almost 99% of the speeches uh, in in uh, canada and i'm one step away from my dtm mm. um so it's it's a very good enriching experience and i would encourage everyone to think on these lines uh, to start um clubs in bilingual or single language uh, format Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Brian, how about you? What's next? Mm. We want to continue to grow our club. We really enjoy having this the ability to get together and practice languages. So for what's next for us is to figure out how to move forward when the COVID situation starts to ease. We have been and and are currently still doing 100% online meetings but we know that very soon we'll be able to start doing in person meetings again and it will be interesting because first of all we've taken on members that are remote won't be able to participate in in person meetings so we'll want to keep those as members if possible and we also feel that the virtual meetings still have a a place in a virtual world where professionals will still have have to participate in virtual meetings for their work we feel that that that's still going to be a necessary skill for people to learn how to participate in and speak uh comfortably and confidently in an online meeting and even manage an online meeting so we we think that there's an opportunity for us to have some sort of hybrid model where we do online and in person meetings and how that's going to look we're not sure yet but i think that's going to be our next challenge i think with members in japan you're going to have to but we can all come to you for advice when that happens so we can all figure it out <laughs> yeah we get just just to add to what brand said yes i think a hybrid model will likely continue for us as well and in fact one of the um, points that i want to bring up on the outreach was you know we bring in a lot of guests guests who are uh, public figures um social workers uh, people from non-profit sectors people from uh, literary field you know novelists you know authors uh, or actors um musicians so we have gotten such people to come and present their speeches or about something about their work um as an extended uh, speech for 20 30 minutes followed by q and a so with that we are able to extend our reach to um new people and new geographies uh, based on um the people's interest so it's something that you know that you are um it's not just the love of language it's also the love of the the particular field or how how do you create awareness about you know this covid in in the villages in rural india so someone who has done work in that area will come and talk about it so that way you know we have been able to spread more word about what we do what what particular does and also bring in awareness about a lot of good things happening all over the world it definitely puts bilingual clubs into a much larger context talking with both of you Yifang, how about you? What's next? What's next? <laughs> There are four bilingual club already right now in District One Hundred One: Japanese English Toastmasters, Brian's Club, Wang Patugalu, Ashok's Club, two Mandarin English clubs, the fifth one, a Telugu English club, Silicon Andhra, 
is in the middle of chattering. What next? Pay attention to people who have common interest to build new bilingual clubs. Language helps cross cultural understanding. We want to live in a community where we understand each other. Very motivational. Are you going to ask us to say something in our language? Yes. Please say something in your own language because I can't wait to actually hear. Who wants to go first? Boku wa Nihongo amari yoku nai desu. Demo yoku ganbarimasu. Nihongo wa Nihongo no hanasu no ga suki desu. Dakara SVJets member o narimashita. Nihongo no speechi, ego no speechi mo yaritai. That's fascinating. Can you give us a summary of that? What that was? Okay, sure. I uh, what I said in Japanese so it was that I'm not I'm not a very good at speaking Japanese, but I do like to uh, I enjoy speaking Japanese or so trying to speak Japanese. And I also said that if you speak English or Japanese, please come and join our club. Sounded great. Ashok, how about you? Namaskara Snehetere, Walk Putugu on the Toastmaster Kuta, E Kuta the Lee, New Kanadali, Matanado Kalena Belskobozo, Nima Pashe Bage, Nima Pritiana Vectopurslike, is Waldea Avakasha, Waldea Vedike, Jagatina Dianta, Halavaru Kanadigro, E Kuta the Lahona Parko Taidare, now Pratiwara Beti active with Hanawara, Walk Putugu Anta. Facebook na le niyo huru kudre na mga viewer gale lani mige sigatte niyo bani ni mas tayhe tarunu karitani kanada dali matna do dikhe naayakto da gunagala na bales koli dikhe uttama bhi dikhe walk pati gulo hani wad gulo I said um the Google is a wonderful platform where you can uh, express uh, in the the language that you love. Um, and also learn the uh, leadership uh, qualities. And this is a great platform to to retain your roots um, and, and continue to love your language and uh, be very expressive in that language. And uh, we meet every week on Sunday and they can find us on uh, Facebook as well, particular. I'm going to have to chime in on something here. Es gibt leider noch kein deutschsprachigen Toastmasters Club, aber vielleicht ist es eine Idee, dass ich einen starten sollte. There is no German Toastmasters Club yet, but maybe that's an idea for me to start one. Yes, you should start one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. I have to jump something? in on that. You may, yes. Please do, you Yifeng. In Chinese. Mandarin. Yeah, you should. Yeah, let, let, let do this it. be the beginning. Yeah. Yes. Toastmasters is <laughs> 对自己的英文没有自信, 如果你英文很好想练习中文, Club, What I said was, Toastmaster is a place for us to learn, grow, and make friends together. If you are like me, you were not confident about your English, join Toastmasters to practice your English. If you have English background, you wanted to learn Mandarin. There are two English Mandarin bilingual clubs in our district. Visit them and learn from them. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, I think we I gave everybody it. a great taste here. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe someone has gotten an idea here. Maybe uh, English Espanol, English Francais, English Deutsch, even a club that incorporates sign language. If you really think about it, that could include non-English, such as Spanish German. That could be very interesting. Thank you so much, Yifeng, Brian, Ashok. And we hope we sparked a few ideas. And welcome our listeners to join us on an international experience in District 101 in the future. Tune in next time and email us at pr at d101tm.org with questions that our district leaders can answer in future podcasts. And if you miss an episode, you can review them all at www 
www.d101tm.org slash destination-101.